Welcome back to the day. Keeneland, Scott Hazleton, Gabby Gaudette with you. Thank you for joining us for these 30 minutes of your morning as we get set for nine races. Temperatures continue to rise over this weekend. The sun has been out. It uh, looks like it's going to be a glorious day out here in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, and it's a great card once again. I mean, yesterday was a phenomenal card and lots of records broken in terms of the handle. But today is a very solid card. And I think the two featured events, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, are very, very deep. They are deep. You almost had me. It's going to be tough, though. Yeah. I think in the Beaumont. She's but she's coming a, off a layoff. She's coming off a layoff, but we'll see how she fares. We'll talk more about that in a moment. You mentioned handle. How about these numbers? I've got them in front of me. A all-sources handle for the 11 race card totaled over $29 million in handle, eclipsing the previous single-day wagering record of $28.1 million. So that was over $1.1 million more than last or two years ago. Single race win play show wagering in the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes, over $2.5 million, shattering the record set in 2019, which was just over $2 million. And the all stakes pick five ending with the grade one Toyota Bluegrass, the pool settled at $1.69 million. That was up from two years ago of $1.53 million. People were out yesterday and they were betting. They were betting here on track. They were betting elsewhere as well. And I know one thing that's new this year is the lower takeout on those rolling doubles throughout the day. Those and that huge. handle has been outstanding. I think up 55%, 54% so far at the meet. 7% drop in takeout. If you haven't heard, 7% drop in takeout from 22% down to 15% for all of the doubles, all of the rolling doubles throughout the card. And handicappers, horse players, gamblers, are responding to this so we thank you and uh, kudos to to Gatewood Bell and Jim Goodman for those coming up with this idea and uh, the response has been extremely positive we expect it to continue to be on those rolling doubles and the great thing about it as we mentioned you play those early doubles you get that bankroll built mm -hmm. up for the later races I think that that's something that you really need to, to look at when looking at the rolling doubles with and this reduced takeout. The rea I love doubles, rolling doubles, because the reality of it is it's difficult to string four races together, five races together, six races together when you're looking at the pick four or the pick five or pick six. But if you have, you, this is kind of taking advantage of your strong opinions throughout the day and try to leveraging it so that you can make a little bit more money other than just a win bet on your best bet of the day. So um, it's, it's awesome. I, I love them. And obviously the betting public has responded really positively to have well. you strung together two winners yet? I have not. <laughs> it has been rough. I am so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's I'm okay. all rusty. It's we'll all right. get the wheels going again. You'll we need a, some WD-40. You have some? I don't, but they do behind us with the <laughs> renovation going on. I'm sure somewhere amongst the renovation for the new paddock grandstand that is being built. As you see, there are several changes around us, and this is what it's going to look like in the fall of 2025. We cannot wait, and the progress is here at Keeneland, and you'll notice several key changes here as we're in this transitional period. No construction will take place on race day as safety is at the utmost importance and at the forefront of everything that Keeneland does for our patrons and obviously for our equine athletes. So uh, it'll be some time, but it's going to be worth the time once this grand facility is complete in the fall of 2025. One thing about Keeneland, this applies to uh, across the board, but especially to the renovations and to the new wagers and the lower takeout that we see this year. Keeneland listens to its customer and then they make changes every single season, every single year. And that's exactly what we're seeing with these new renovation plans. They listen to the customer and there's going to be more options for those coming out to experience racing. Yeah, experience during the racing and during the sales mm -hmm. as well. Obviously, racing and sales company Keeneland and has been for decades. Let's take a look back at yesterday's racing. We will begin in the Commonwealth. The $45,000 Keeneland September sale grad yearling Bo Cruz able to dash away from him in the grade three Commonwealth on the cutback in distance and Tom Leach coming through with his long shot pick of the day. Six, right, number six in race number six. Remember we said six, That's six, right. six. The horse went off at six to one. Four sixes, so he that was his out. Buku, yeah. brilliant on the comeback as well. She's now a two-time stakes winner at Keeneland, taking the Appalachian, presented by the Japan Racing Association, Keeneland grad. Uh, she is a very, very good filly. 
Yeah, she is very nice, and she had that explosive kick coming down the stretch. Talking about Alva Starr, what a mare this is, too. She's so fast. She didn't necessarily get the lead last time or yesterday, but she overcame that. And look at beautiful, beautiful filly in the paddock, or yeah, winner circle. Grade one winner of the Resolute Racing Madison Stakes, R. Zach. He's back and back into the stakes winner circle here at Keeneland, another Keeneland sale grad. Last time we saw him, he was w taking the Woodford stakes, and uh, Mike Trimbetta just says he continues to get better and be figure things out, and then this was the performance of the afternoon. Sierra Leone just gobbling up the ground, and the scary thing, as we've talked about, he just does it so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, once he matures a little bit, he's only run a couple of times. Yep. What What is he going to do uh, following that kind of performance, acting up at the gate, responding to the crowd? He's still learning, but boy, he's got so much raw ability. It is crazy to think about. It looked like Tyler asked him to go, and he's like, whoa, <laughs> like he kind of had to sit back in the saddle a little bit because he's so push button. He's almost too but push button. He needs to kind of figure out those gears a little bit more, but that just shows you how naturally talented this horse is to close and win the Risen Star last time out, and also to close and win the Grade 1 Toyota Bluegrass yesterday. And a tip of the cap to uh, Debbie and Jack Oxley. They bred the winner of Arzac and Sierra Leone, yep. and they were very excited in the winter circle yesterday. Sometimes we forget about the breeder. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time, money, and work to uh, breed a good one, and they had a really good day yesterday. It starts with them. Let's check in with WKYT for this afternoon's weather. For your Sunday Keeneland forecast, it's looking like we're going to end up seeing lots of sunshine. Right now, what we're projecting is mostly sunny skies. A little bit of cloud cover is going to add in around those dinner time hours, but overall, those temperatures aren't looking bad at all. By the time we're towards 6 o'clock, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the mid-60s for our area. It's going to end up being a beautiful day. Enjoy the races. The John Deere track conditions for the afternoon, fast and good, if I saw that correctly. Fast and good for the afternoon here. I'll take your word for at it. At Keeneland Racecourse. I, I do apologize for not having that. It is fast and good on this Sunday. Um, that has been confirmed. We have confirmation okay. from above. Uh, let's get into our full card selections for the afternoon. Download that Keeneland Race Day app. Um, it comes, our first agreeance comes in race number five. And that'll be it until we get to race eight. Yep, race eight, the grade two uh, Beaumont. And uh, we both agree on the six. You almost had me despite coming in off that long layoff since the Fern Creek last November. Those are our full card selections. We've got to move along in the program. Uh, make sure you download the Keeneland Race Day app. Make sure you give us a follow on social media, X Keeneland Racing, Facebook at Keeneland. Same on Instagram, FanDuel TV. Give them a follow on X and download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV uh, to catch our coverage over on FanDuel TV each and every day of the Keeneland Racing. Let's get into the grade two middle ground Beaumont Stakes, middle ground capital Beaumont Stakes, race number eight on the card. You almost had me even money. Denim and Pearls, the gritty filly from the inside, cuts back in distance. But the number six horse, you almost had me. Uh, she is a stakes winner more than a few times over. She won at Churchill and start two of her career in the Kentucky Juvenile on Kentucky Derby weekend. Uh, she was then third and second against some tough company thereafter, but she really turned it on, especially in the final couple of starts of her three-year-old campaign two-year-old campaign excuse me in the Myrtlewood here at Keeneland and then most recently in the Fern Creek which was four months back we'll go back to her most recent run in the Fern Creek where she gets up and wins by three quarters of a length on that cool evening at, at, at Churchill Downs down on the inside and from post position number one she just fights this was she's not gonna win by seven like she did in that last race, this is fairgrounds. No, you're wa we're watching Tipsy Tammy. Scott. Oh, we're watching Tipsy Tammy. Mm -hmm. Tipsy <laughs> Tammy is who we're taking a look at. Excuse me. Uh, she ends up finishing third. That was when she got hung up at the gate. Yeah, she just yeah. didn't break well. That's the bottom line. I'm all over the place today. It's okay. It's okay. But she never stopped trying after that. No, she did. You didn't. could see she could. She never stopped trying. She was way too far back. And another thing about that, all of these fillies have been going against straight three-year-olds. That was an older allowance race, and that is a tougher race because you're, you're going against, obviously, older and more accomplished uh, fillies and mares. So, another point. I botched that bad. It's all good. 
you know? But she she missed the break. Bottom line, she missed yeah. the break, and then she was able to run a decent third. She's better than that. She's faster than that away from the gate. And she was beaten by Impel on her career career debut, who ended up being the favorite for the grade one central. Mm -hmm. Big Ashland didn't perform to the expectations, stepping up to grade one company, but still beaten by a very good filly. But I still have you almost had me on top with Tipsy Tammy underneath and Deniment Pearls, who I love. I mean, she just tries as hard as a horse possibly can, um, and we'll see if she can get it done today. Yeah, let's go back to you almost had me in now the Fern done. Creek. Let's throw to this and take a look. Yeah, she drew the rail in this 11-horse uh, field, and as you mentioned, she showed a lot of grit and determination to come up on the inside. This is really tough. Horses don't always like to be in this type of spot, and they don't always like to squeeze through that small hole between another horse and the rail, but she was just dead game. She did win this race as the heavy, heavy favorite. <clears throat> She's done really nothing wrong throughout her career. She clearly is a one-turn type of horse. She was precocious enough to win first time out for Jack, John Hancock. Uh, <clears throat> she was well-touted before that, before they privately sold her eventually. So, you know, I think the there's reason to believe that she should be able to get fit off of this layoff. I think the only concern, and we're talking about an even money favorite, <clears throat> Horses, especially fillies, sometimes there's changes from two to three. And those three-year-olds quickly catch up to them. That's true, but I think she got better at the end of her That's why I picked season, her, right? Because I do think she's kind of the exception to the rule. And she's been privately sold a couple of times. She, she was privately sold out of her debut and recently privately sold to John Stewart and Resolute Racing, who has built his band of horses from... He had one horse back in September. He was telling me yesterday morning when we were visiting with Goodnight Olive, one horse to now over 90. In yeah, that's what, insane. How many months? Seven <laughs> months. So he is building his uh, his roster very, very quickly. Let's check in with Tom Leach for more on today's Middle Ground Capital Beaumont Stakes. Trader Brad Cox has a powerful one-two punch in here. Let's start with Denim and Pearls. She comes out of two turn races, and Cox believes the cutback is going to be the key to her chance. You know, we had her on the Kentucky Oaks Trail, and there wasn't enough there to make us think she wanted uh, a mile and an eighth, so we thought we'd cut her back in distance. She performed well at Kena last spring, sprint, or sorry, last fall, breaking her maiden sprinting, and then she ran a big race here, one-turn mile. So we're hoping she'll, she'll uh, appreciate the turn back. Cox also has You Almost Had Me, who is the morning line favorite. He admits that the seven furlongs in change of the beard course is a bit of a concern off the layoff, but there is no concern about how she's training. If you'd asked me a month ago, I told you, I would have told you, I don't think she would quite be ready, but her last, last two, three works have been phenomenal. So um, I think she's ready to, to run a big race. Uh, Beard course, I think she should be able to handle it with a good trip. She grew well. She's a very, very classy filly. Um, we just gave her some time off. She'd had a long year last last uh, season, and um, she came back and has been ever bit as good of the mornings as she was last year. So she likes Keeneland. She ran well there last fall, and hopefully she can handle the distance off the layoff. I guess that would be a little bit of the concern would be the beard course off the layoff, but um, she's pretty classy. I thought, given the fact she's been off the layoff, she drew very well. Well, for me, it's just a coin flip here. I go back and forth between these two. Hard to imagine we won't see one of them in the winner's circle today. Race goes through Brad Cox. I mean, that's the bottom line in the middle ground capital Beaumont Stakes. We're going to go to race number seven next here on today at Keeneland. Race number seven, our co-feature, the Palisade Stakes for the three-year-old sprinting on the turf course at five and a half furlong. Scratch the 13 and 14. I know he's riding a 30 to one shot CPG, the number seven horse, but Frankie DeTore is in the saddle. He won six, six races, races in a row yesterday almost at, won seven. at Santa Anita, almost won the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah. So he's coming into Keeneland race course hot. He was here on opening day, opening day here on Friday, rides at Santa Anita, wins six, wins a half a dozen now back here at Keeneland. Was we in Dubai last him. weekend. And he was in New York prior to that. He's just been all over the place, Insane. but that's the schedule that he is used to um and he gets results no no question about that in the palisade stakes I, I go to no name mets for bregman family racing and wwbd lec and others and george weaver his race in the breeders cup was good he had an inside draw he ends up running on finishing fourth and he got a little bit shuffled back but i like the way he finished this race off he stayed <laughs> in the competition he didn't back down and at this point in time looked like he was going to maybe beat a couple but he he carries some momentum with that horse coming to the outside, Valiant 
course and ends up finishing fourth. I think five and a half furlongs is a better situation. Breeders' Cup races are tough. We know that Big Evs, the European, was able to win. He is a two-time stakes winner. He went over to Royal Ascot and ran in the Group 2 Norfolk Stakes when we were there uh, at the end of June. I'll go back to him uh, going five and a half furlongs and being a three-year-old now by no name ever. I think that that's a positive aspect for him. My boy Prince, the number eight horse from Arcassi off the five-month layoff. He returns to sprinting. He was a good sprinter to start off his career before going those route races, and I think he's more than capable against this group today. And then the 12-horse Refuel, the son of Hardspun, back on grass. He's a speedster from the outside. He's a half-brother to a, a really nice uh, run-happy colt following C, who won the grade two Vosburg. So the pedigree's there. Keeneland grad for Rapoli St. Elias that paid over a half a million dollars for him. Watch out for the Asmussen runners as well. Speaking to the, the team, they like both of their runners today in the Palisade Stakes. All right. I went to the eight. My boy Prince as the top pick. You and I agree on the top three here, just in a different order. And we'll take a look at the juvenile turf. Yes, this horse wound up stretching out to a distance of ground in his two-year-old season. But I thought this was a huge race. Clearly kind of looks like he just doesn't want to go this far at the end of the day, at least against top caliber horses. And the cutback in distance, I think, is going to be preferred for him. I mean, when you look at his one-turn races, he dominated Stakes Company up at Woodbine. He came back to get a little bit more distance in the grade one summer, uh, finishing second in that event. But his one-turn races just look really fast, really good. So I did prefer him on top. You just want fast horses in these types of races. He's fast. Refuel is fast. Um, he's a half to following C. I don't know if you just mentioned that. but he's I did. Got, okay, sorry. Sometimes I check out when you're... I'm thinking about the next thing sometimes oh uh, yeah most of the time i'm gonna give you one horse i didn't use in the top three just because you and i both went with the top three the 10 shards i think this is an interesting horse he actually ran a very very good race in the breeders cup sprint he had loads of traffic i talked to kelsey danner last time out before the last race she said we were in between running him seven and a half furlongs on the turf at Gulfstream or at turfway they ultimately ran him at turfway he came closing late Clearly, it was a prep for bigger things, and I really think that will set him up for success. He's going to be a price. He almost got there in the Indian summer, mm -hmm. which was his race that that got him into the Breeders' Cup. There was a lot of question for Shards, the 10 in the Palisades today, whether he was getting into the Breeders' Cup. They had to work out shipping. He finally did get in. They got nod that he was going to be part of the group that was selected for that race. So, yeah, he is, he is a live uh, runner in today's palisades let's take a look at our sales grad spotlight comes in race number six three-year-old fillies in a maiden special weight worth a hundred thousand dollars and encourage each other is the filly we'll take a look at at this time she was hip number 438 the hammer drops at three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the daughter of street sense out of the stakes winning first damn sister nation daughter of into mischief Purchased by Rapoli Stable and St. Elias Stable. She's had one run that was over a sloppy track on a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park. Gets to go two turns today. She's an Ontario-bred filly uh, competing once again, or competing again and competing for the first time in Kentucky. So encourage each other. High-priced yearling a couple of years back. Our sales grad spotlight shining on her. Clock a report for this afternoon. And... We're going to go to race number four. Yes, indeed. Half mile and 48 and two. $850,000 filly by Bolt Doro, who worked on even terms with depiction. Third in the Dania Beach. Won her two-turn debut at Fairgrounds for fun. So mark the three in race number four. And let's talk about me in race number six. That's the number four horse. The five-eighths work in a minute. Best uh, Seventh best of 18 on that morning. Just missing the career debut at Turfway at 17-1 to in a blanket finish. Dirt rotter pedigree for let's talk about me. So mark the three in race four, the four in race six. All right, now we get into our tickets. That's right. I'm going to take a shot at the $3 Keeneland turf pick three, which will begin in race number five. Five, seven, and nine, the sequence for the $3 Keeneland turf pick three. I'm going to use up and down for John Ennis from the inside back on grass. He's just been a consistent sorter. She has uh, really throughout her career. So she's got course form here at Keeneland as well and two good races outside of just the win, a third place finish on top of that. The number four horse run for the hills for Mark Cassie, another one that's been very consistent over the course of her career. In race number seven, second leg of the $3 Keeneland turf pick three, the four and eight, and then three deep in race number nine, $36 investment. With all the talk about the rolling doubles, and the reduced takeout, don't forget about the $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3. Yeah. It's my favorite wager 
here at Keeneland Racecourse. It's awesome. I love this wager as well. All right, we're going to look at the late pick four sequence. It's a $36 ticket. <clears throat> I'm going to have coverage in the sixth race. It's a maiden special weight. I do prefer the nine, but I wanted to include the first-time starter for Phil Bauer, the two, Claire's Jet, the five, Sitamara for Bill Mott, and the six, Restless Dreamer, second-time starter for trainer Chad Brown. In the seventh race, 4-8-12, we talked about that race already, and, and the grade two Beaumont. I'm going to back myself up with tipsy Tammy just because maybe you all almost had me might be a little bit short off the layoff. Brad Cox mentioned the one concern is the beard course off the layoff uh, here at Keeneland. And then in the ninth and final race, I went with, t- with the two, three, and the eight. And I just used my top three selections in there, but I probably could have thrown in a couple more in that last race. I oh, had a tough time with it. That is a tough little race. Um, there is, there's no... I don't want to say clarity, but there are yes. a lot of horses that make sense mm-hmm. that in that ninth and final. There's no center to the race. You always want to find a center and then work around the center. There's no center. There's just so much going on in there. Have you found your center? I have not found my center. Okay. I'm still I'm still uh, searching. Let's work on that, and then we'll work on the center of race number nine. Um, my best angle of the day, races two and three. This is a rolling double. I'm going to talk about race number three, and I want to show you the backtrack on Northern Chill in a moment, or the look back on Northern Chill in a moment. Uh, I'm starting with the six oncoming train. I think he must be doing well to be in the starter allowance condition. That's my read on oncoming trade off the year oncoming train, the first leg of this this double. That's the six in race number two. But then Northern Chill in race number three, I think he's found the right group to go from maiden 50 and the way that he performs sprinting here today. He blitzed this group from an inside draw. He's going to have to do the same with the outside post. Ray Gutierrez, he likes to put horses in the race. I was impressed by this win. Runs in 110 and 3. If he can do anything near this again here this afternoon, I think he'll be tough. What was he 9-2 to two on the morning line? Northern Chill. So I'm going to cold deck the, the double. A $10 double. Races 2 and 3 and go 6 and 11 in this $10 double here today with Northern Chill being the highlight of this. I like it. <clears throat> I'm going to take us earlier in the card and full disclosure, my best bet of the day scratched. The I Wesley was, Runner. No, not the Wesley oh. Runner. It was in the third race today. I can't remember. Yeah, third race, ruler of the universe. Loved that horse. Singled in the early pick five. Obviously, I, I'm all over the place. You seem I'm still right now. trying to find my center. So we're going to pivot. Sing a little song is 20 to 1 on the morning line. I don't know that we'll, she'll be that big of a price, but I love her. I love her today. Give us a reason This was why. my backup. Okay. <clears throat> Last time out, she closed into somewhat of a slow pace, and it was also against the bias. So there were three races on the main track at Gulfstream Park that day, and all of the horses won being forwardly placed. And we're not talking about favorites. We're talking about five to one, six to one shots. So I did think she ran well against the bias. She was so far off of the pace and had so much ground to make up. She only lost by a half length in that event. Who did she lose to two starts back? your eventual grade one Ashland winner and Leslie's Rose. So I think that this is a horse that has a really sneaky form. I've always thought that when Ian Wilkes's horses come around really quickly, they're very, very good because Ian is such a patient trainer. She won first time out. She lost to an eventual grade one winner in her second start, and she closed against the bias last time out. Sing a little song. You like the bird songs, too. She's the daughter of bird song. There you go. $20 to 20 bucks to win. Let's do it. 20 to 1. What do you think she goes off at? I'm going to say maybe like 8 to 1. 8 to 1. Yeah. So that in was going to be my guess. That is our best angles of the day. Let's see if Tom Leach can secure another long shot play of the day following yesterday's long shot play of the day with Bo Cruz. Shot pick of the day comes in the sixth race. Encourage each other from the Todd Pletcher Bart. She didn't show much in her debut, but Pletcher's been able to get five works in her since that last race. I don't know if we'll get the eight to one of the morning line, but if we do, that could be a nice long shot pick for the Sunday card. Adding blinkers could be a plus as well. Encourage each other in race six. It's always an it's always an important message. What was the message? Encourage each other. <laughs> Sorry. You see, you're, you're so sweet at times, and then you just, you come strong with me. 
Can you just can you show me a little it's from my mama. today? It's from my mom. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just telling you. It's Mama G. Mama G. She's Mama the G same brings way. it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I've got some advice for you. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. That is true. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for that inspirational speech. You reacted to the your best bet of the day scratching and you found a, a 20 to 1 shot to I'm, come with I'm today. I'm pivoting today. Yep. Life's all about pivoting. As, and in our careers as well. It is. Today was a scramble. It was I apologize, a scramble. Gabby. I still have this me. Okay, I, so. I, feel, I feel like we're going to get it together <laughs> and we're going to have strong opinions, which we've already established in the Keeneland Race Day app if you don't have it. And as far as the doubles are concerned, a reminder that low takeout for those rolling doubles, the handicappers have responded. We had record uh, handle yesterday over $29 million. Uh, this is going to be a very, very good day. You know how you make fun of me, how I say, you know, like Mercury is in retrograde or whatever. I've never made fun of you at yeah, all. Yeah, because I ever. say that when things are going crazy. Well, obviously, there's a solar eclipse tomorrow. You got big plans? No, I, I think my handicapping is going to get a lot better after the solar <laughs> eclipse. At least that's what I'm banking so on. So it has to do with the moon phase <laughs> or yes, something? Yes, the moon phase. Yeah, we're, we just got to get this behind us and week two at Keeneland. Watch out. Well, what about today? It's National Beer Day, so maybe a couple of brewskis. I don't do better going? with brewskis. No? no, I quickly go downhill with brewskis. We have plenty of uh, beer on National Beer Day, plenty of bourbon as well. So it's going to be a glorious day here at Keeneland Racecourse. And uh, what a weekend it's already been. And we encourage you to come out here and join us if you're making plans. We look forward to seeing you here today at Keeneland Racecourse. And uh, we, as Gabby mentioned, we'll be back at it to, on Wednesday, a full card of racing on Wednesday as well as we'll progress. And don't forget, you know, with Toyota Bluegrass Stakes Day yesterday in the three-year-old picture, we still have the Stone the Street Lexington, Lexington mm -hmm. and points, points. You know, this might be the year where the Lexington, even more so with some of the points dropping off the map, comes seriously into play. It's always been a very good uh, Kentucky Derby prep for those looking for that last shot to get in. But this year is going to be really interesting to see how uh, it shapes up. So Hades is going to run in the Lexington. He if he doesn't win, then that means no more time who finished second in the Tampa Bay Derby is in. So it really is a factor for no more time and Hades at this point in time. And Hades won the Holy Bull Stakes. Yes. A couple of weeks, a couple of months back. No, not weeks. Well, weeks come to months. You know what I mean. For Gabby, <laughs> Let's get out I'm of here. Scott. Enjoy the day at Keeneland Racecourse. When the spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th. Did you know Toyota actually spends a million dollars every hour of every day on R&D? That's in addition to a $39 billion investment to design and build vehicles in the USA. Made in America means something to Toyota, like over 170,000 jobs and over 32 million Toyotas built right here in the USA. And for over 20 years, Toyota's electrified vehicles have led the way to a better tomorrow. The more you know, the more you'll drive Toyota. Let's go places. Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard.
not for our sake, but for theirs, for the love of the horse, for generations to come. Keeneland welcomes Blue Note to the paddock. Blue Note is the newest University of Kentucky a cappella group and is open to all UK choir members. The group appears every year at UK choral concerts and are featured during the annual college holiday performances. Today, Blue Note will first present our state song, My Old Kentucky Home. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children are gay. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, we're so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red and the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled?
Keeneland is proud to recognize LaRon Claiborne from programs as the employee of the day. Congratulations, LaRon.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse, where the main track is fast. The turf is listed good. The rail at 10 feet on the turf course today. Time now for a look at the program changes. Beginning in the first race, where the first of the day's rolling doubles and pick threes get underway. It's also the start of the early pick five. In the opener, scratch number six, Sweet Coffee. Also scratch 13, Misty Sunday, and 14, Baytown Storm. That's in the first race, scratch number six, Sweet Coffee. Also scratch number 13, Misty Sunday, and the 14, Baytown Storm. There's a jockey change in the first race, number 12, the Queen's MG. The jockey will be Andres Calleja. It's in the first race, the jockey for the 12, the Queen's MG, will be Andres Calleja. Second race, start of the early pick four. Scratch number eight, Pico Doro. That's in the second race. Scratch number eight, Pico Doro. Third race. Scratch the six, Ruler of the Universe. That's in the third race. Scratch number six, Ruler of the Universe. Jockey change on the five, Midnight Stormy. That'll be Declan Cannon. Number five, Midnight Stormy, Jockey, Declan Cannon. Fourth race, start of the pick six, no carry over today. Scratch number four, Princess Mayfair. That's the fourth race, scratch number four, Princess Mayfair. Race five, start of the late pick five, also start of the Keeneland Turf pick three, made up of races five, seven, and nine. In race five, scratch the 10, Laura's Charm. Also scratch number 13, Erna. Also scratch the 15, Covenant Lady. And scratch the 16, Secret Statement. That's at race five, scratch the 10, Laura's Charm. Scratch number 13, Erna. Scratch the 15, Covenant Lady, and scratch the 16, Secret Statement. Please note number 14 will run. 14, Driana, draws into the race. One other note about race five, there is an overweight, the five, Hideki, the jockey one pound over. That's number five, Hideki, jockey one pound over. Sixth race is where the late pick four begins. Scratch the one speed shopper. Also scratch the 14 neon icon. Scratch the 15 spirited. And scratch the 16 foreseen. That's in race six. Scratch number one speed shopper. Also scratch 14 neon icon, 15 spirited, and 16 foreseen. Please note number 13 will run. 13 mystical chant draws into the race. Seventh race, the Palisades. Take out the 13 and 14 sketch and works for me. They did not draw in. That's the seventh race. Take out numbers 13 and 14 sketch and works for me. They did not draw into the race. Featured eighth race, the grade two middle ground capital Beaumont Stakes. No changes in race eight. Ninth and final race, no carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw in. Again, take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw in to that final race. There's an overweight, the four squash blossom, jockey one pound over. That's in the ninth race. Number four squash blossom, the jockey, is one pound over. And those are the current program changes. Time now to check in with Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudette.
Very happy Sunday to you, Kurt Becker. And for those of you joining us here at Keeneland Racecourse, as we get set for a gorgeous Sunday of racing yesterday, the wagering was big, Gabby. They bet over $29 million yesterday here at Keeneland, and we had a record pick five pool in the All-Stakes pick five, $1.69 million. <laughs> so thank you so much for participating. We another got, got another great card ahead led by two stakes races. The wagering numbers were insane yesterday, and the performances were insane yesterday. I still can't get over Sierra Leone and what he did in the bluegrass. It was a very exciting day, but yes, we got to cap off the weekend on a high note. The Palisades is race number seven, marks the return of No Name Mets, the speedster for Rusty Arnold and Alex Bregman, but that is a deep field. And then we go to race number eight, the grade two middle ground capital Beaumont Stakes. You almost had me. She's going to be awful tough in this race here today. Both of these races are really, really tough. The Palisades, it took me a long time to get through that field. And then in the grade two Beaumont, I think there's a lot of up and comers. Tipsy Tammy is one of them. Rigney Racing, they spent uh, quite a bit of money at the Keeneland September sale this particular year, and it's really rewarded them. They've had a nice crop of horses, Tipsy Tammy me being one of them so i'm excited for both of the featured events today sun is shining nine races ahead two stakes races good luck on this sunday here at keeneland Race number one now less than 18 minutes till post time starts the early pick five here at Keeneland Racecourse. And this is our second two year old race of the meet. The first coming on Friday, which was taken by Wesley Ward in very impressive fashion with a filly by the name of Shoot and True. And right now he does have the favorite image of me, who's not quite as hot of a favorite as that filly was back on opening day in race number two on that card. She's six to five right now. But I go to West Memorial, the 11 horse for John Hancock, Ray Gutierrez in the second. Battle. This is a filly that is a half sister to a couple of or a first out winner. I should say a two year old first out winner forty five thousand dollar Keeneland September yearling last year uh, by Caracaro. So we'll see if she is going to live up to her expectations that have been set on her from this barn four to one right now. She is the co second choice in the wagering and she comes into this race with a good gate workout in forty seven and three. So I'll look at West Memorial uh, to be the second two year old winner of this meeting here at Keeneland. Keeneland race course. The number five horse is where I'll head to next and leaning on the pedigree of this Phillies uh, female family as well. Run Camilla run for trainer Anna Decker Two, the two year old winners were first out winners from that dam as well. Life lesson and she's a daughter of the champion West Coast. She comes in off of uh, some workouts at the Thurber Training Center to get ready for this career debut. So you've got to look at the female families when you look at really any horse, but especially with two year olds and the mayor's ability to produce young winners. And uh, this mother, this Philly's mother has been able to do that. So run Camilla run at 24 to one. And then finally, the number eight horse image of me, the hoot nanny filly for Wesley Ward. Now, Wesley scratched his other filly in here who most likely would have been the favorite in here. Sweet coffee, but image of me, a daughter of hoot nanny, as mentioned, bred by Wesley Ward. She doesn't have the prototypical build that you typically see from these young horses from Wesley Ward, in my opinion opinion during this spring meet but you've got to respect Wesley in this situation as he goes to Gerardo Corrales in this instance at odds of six to five we'll get a good look at him down here in the paddock and give you some front side thoughts on these two-year-olds getting ready to go four and a half furlongs two-year-old fillies in this maiden special weight event again starts the early pick five first double of the day with that reduced takeout down to 15 percent also first pick three of the day as we're less than 16 minutes away from post time
I want to make you wear it on the floor. <laughs> The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race, the Terminus Farm, maiden special weight, two-year-old fillies, Heedley course, four and a half furlongs, track listed fast, the turf is listed good today, and the opener scratched the six, Sweet Coffee, also scratched 13, Misty Sunday, and scratch 14, Baytown Storm. A reminder, the jockey for the 12, the Queen's MG, Andres Calleja. Number 12, the Queen's MG, the jockey, Andres Calleja. Double and pick three wagering start of the early pick five. Post time in seven minutes. Less than six minutes away from the opener here at Keeneland with these two-year-old fillies. And what in the literal, the number two horses who we're taking a look at right now. I think it has to be read into the fact that Jenna Antonucci has opted to bring this filly up from Gulfstream Park to run here at Keeneland. Easily could have stayed back in South Florida and probably found an easier group. But the intention to come here has to have purpose. They must really like this filly. She has been bet down as low as two to one. A daughter of Lord Nelson who comes from a family of two old winners and she is feeling good right now as she breaks away from the pony and bucking a little bit and uh, rider Javier Castellano looks like he's got her settled in but she is feeling good as she gets ready for her debut nine to two on the board right now on the very creatively named daughter of Lord Nelson what in the literal the number four horse Baytown Cleopatra Paul McEntee saying they telling me down in the paddock they like this filly you wouldn't associate this kind of pedigree with speed and quickness 
this uh, by American Pharaoh out of a Galileo first dam, but she has that, and she's got some good size to her in comparison to uh, these other two-year-old fillies in here. She's four to one on the board right now. Two fillies getting respected in the wagering in what is not. I think a typical two-year-old type of race. The Wesley Ward runner is drifting a bit in price. Image of me, the number eight horse now up to, up to eight to five. We'll see how this plays out. Less than four minutes away from the opener. Pick five pool continues to grow, nearing $350,000 as there is a look at that favorite for Wesley Ward, Image of Me. Four minutes to get those wagers in for the Sunday opener here at Keeneland. The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race, the Terminus Farm, start of the early pick five. Moving into line for the first.
Baytown Cleopatra comes forward. Run, Camilla, run. The Queen's MG, the last one. At the post, and they are off. Island Ride broke alertly. What in the literal has the early lead, though? And there goes West Memorial. The Queen's MG out running in fourth. Image of me close up in fifth, moving forward from between horses. Look at my buckle. Goes in sixth. What in the literal has lost several lengths? Drops out toward the back of the pack now along the inside as they swing around the turn. Run Camilla, run center of the pack. Three wide around the turn, just to the outside of Baytown. Cleopatra further back. La Medusa. What in the literal? Now better than a dozen lengths off the lead and is followed by Pounds in Town and Street Last who's at the back. The Queen's MG has a narrow lead from West Memorial, who's still there, though, and fighting on toward the inside. These two have opened up by seven lengths back to Image of Me. Here's West Memorial getting the lead a neck and deep stretch to the inside of the Queen's MG, who's right there past the 16th pole. West Memorial, the Queen's MG. West Memorial, the Queen's MG. It looked to be the Queen's MG from the outside getting her nose down, but that will be a photo for the win at 52.44. A huge upset in the opener. The Queen's MG under Andres Queja pulling off the upset, able to break with West Memorial and hang right there with her. It turned into a two-race, two-horse battle in this race. The photo is posted on the tote board, but in my opinion, it looks like the Queen's MG just just gets the best of West Memorial right on the wire, but they bob back and forth. It's between the 12 and 11. We'll see if we can see a better angle as we go close up on these two fillies, duking it out down to the wire. That's the 11 on the far side, the 12 on the near side. Photos on the board, but I'd give it to the 12, the Queen's MG, and here will be our best look at it as it's to the inside, back to the outside, West Memorial in front, but not when it accounts, it appears here in race number one. Photo for the win. Hold all tickets. Unofficial results of Keeneland's first race in the photo for the win, number 12, the Queen's MG finished first. The 11 West Memorial second, 10 Island Ride third, 8 Image of Me fourth. 12, 11, 10, 8, unofficial.
In the winter circle for Keeneland's first race, the Terminus Farm, number 12, the Queen's MG, owned and trained by Israel Acevedo, Andres Calleja, the winning jockey. The Queen's MG, upset winner of the first, a two-year-old filly by 1,000 words, out of show queen by Grindstone, bred in Kentucky by Van Meter, Hernandez, Torres, and Benalay. The four-and-a-half furlongs on the Heedley course, 52.44 seconds. First race results official, 12, 11, 10, 8, the official results. In the winter circle, the Terminus Farm Trophy presentation to the connections of the Queen's MG. Keeneland's second race upcoming starts the early pick four. Main track is fast. Turf listed good today. In race two, scratch the eight, Pico Doro. Eight, Pico Doro scratch.
Race number two, 18 minutes to the post. Scratch the number eight horse, field of seven to start the early pick four here at Keeneland Racecourse. I'm going to take a shot with oncoming train, the number six horse, off this long layoff for trainer Greg Foley. Hasn't been seen since January 15th of 2023, well over a year since this now six-year-old has raced. But Greg Foley is very good in extended layoff situations, 23%, and I know it's been over a year, but the sample size, the window of time in which these stats are thrown at us from a handicapping perspective tend to be three months on upwards as far as layoff and layoffs, and Greg Foley's 23% in those situations he comes out of tough races at fairgrounds a year plus ago granted and he's running here today in a starter allowance race being protected and i find that to be a positive sign the fact that he must be doing well in this instance to be in this starter allowance race i think that his races a year plus ago fit right with this group i think they fit right with the two favorites now that are both sitting at two to one so i'll go to greg foley more than anything in this situation being protected in a starter 30 with oncoming train here in race number two he's the number six horse seven to one right now in this wide open seven horse field the number one horse another seven to one shot that is hocus for Michael Tom, uh, Michael Thompson, excuse me, off the four-month layoff. Last seen at the beginning of November at Churchill Downs, running in a starter allowance race for 50. Ran well for starter 30, same level in which he faces today here at Keeneland. He broke his maiden at Keeneland all the way back in April of last year. Got a very late start to his career, debuted at the age of six. He's now seven years old. He's only run six times coming into this start. But his only bad race was last time out when he was in over his head. The tote board told you that he was. He was 22 to 1 that day. And also you could throw in that turf race that just did not work out for him over at Ellis Park. Outside of that, his races have been solid. And he's got speed from the inside, in my opinion, to try to make a case for himself under Declan Cannon. So watch out for Hocus in race number two. And then finally, the number three horse, Supremely. Another one for Greg Foley. Two runs here at Keeneland, both third place finishes. He comes off of synthetic tries up at Turfway Park. His races on dirt prior to that are just as good, if not better, especially when he won for 30 the day in which he was taken off of Greg Foley, and then Greg was and managed to get him back into his barn. Another positive sign. He's 2-1 to one right now with Tyler Gaffleone getting the nod, and Tyler rode him to victory in November of last fall by three lengths the day in which he was taken off of Greg Foley. So anytime you see Barnes reacquire horses that they lost through the claim box, it has to be a positive each and every time, and that is the case with supremely here in race number two this is a tricky race it's an evenly matched race which makes it such a good betting race as you're seeing on the tote board we only have one horse right now at double digit odds the two horse halloween who comes into this start actually taking a slight drop down in class and i would say that he would be one that you could even make a case for with Alvin Jimenez in the saddle based on his runs for 30 up at Turfway Park. Good betting race. Good luck. 15 minutes to post. Race number two here at Keeneland. Start of the first pick four opportunity of the day.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race. Starter allowance three year olds and up six furlongs over the fast main track. Scratch the eight Pico Doro. Number eight is scratched. Double pick three and start of the early pick four. Main track is fast turf good today. Post time in seven minutes. A couple of good feeling horses here in the post parade for race number two. True Jedi being one of them, just winner last time out for 30,000 at Turfway Park. That's how we picked up eligibility for this race, with it being a starter allowance for horses that started for the $30,000 tag or less, and which have not won three races, which even brings it more of a level playing field as we're seeing here today. So this horse at five to two on the board, making him the second choice. We'll see how he fares moving up in class off of that win. But again, this is a class level that he belongs in and fits in given where all of these other horses have come out of as well and doesn't hurt to have Ired Ortiz Jr. in the saddle but his energy has been high since coming out here to the paddock and he's fit and ready to go for Starry Night Racing and the number six horse oncoming train uh, he's high energy as well he looks ready to go off the layoff Greg Foley telling me that uh, he is he is ready he's doing well so positive signs on this horse that is sitting at five to one right now such a competitive field there really is not a single standout in here as i mentioned before cases to be made for all of them in race number two which will begin the early pick four we're less than four minutes away from post time at keeneland
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, start of the early pick four. Moving into line, race two. He must be a Weasley, comes forward. Oncoming train next to load. JP race the last one. Goes in at the post. And they're off. Oncoming train from the outside. Here's Halloween from the inside along with Hocus against the rail. Hocus moves up for the lead by just ahead. Halloween between horses supremely up close far outside in third. Oncoming train is now fourth center of the track as they head for the far turn. True Jedi fifth down toward the inside. JP Race is in sixth. And you must be a Weasley, last of the seven. Five lengths from the lead onto the far turn they go. Hocus against the rail leads at three quarters of a length. Halloween and then supremely stacks up to the outside 22.99 seconds for that opening quarter. Oncoming train is in the fourth position. Angles toward the center of the track as they turn for home. JP race outside of that one. Halloween has dropped back along the rail. You must be a Weasley and True Jedi are at the back and Hocus has the lead out to three and a half lengths as they come off the far turn. Supremely tries to take aim from the outside but there's just over an eighth of a mile to go and Hocus is the leader. Hocus leads it by just over three lengths. Supremely goes second by three and then True Jedi who runs late toward third from the inside and you must be a Weasley fourth on the outside. Hocus is in front, though, and Hocus wins it for Declan Cannon. Supreme Lee was home second. True Jedi was third, and you must be a Weasley far outside was up for fourth. One, three, four across the wire in race number two here at Keeneland. Not quite the price we got in the opener, but still a big price. It's seven to one on Hocus. Just a different horse from the inside here today. Finding that speed once again, as we'd seen from him twice in the past at Keeneland. He draws away the seven-year-old son of Arch, Arch, Arch and starts seven of his career. Picks up win number three in mild upset fashion.
Unofficial results of Keeneland's second race. Number one, Hocus was first. Number three, Supremely was second. Number four, True Jedi third. Number five, You Must Be a Weasley was fourth. One, three, four, five, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's second race, number one, Hocus. The winner owned and trained and bred in Kentucky by Michael Thompson, Declan Cannon. The winning jockey, Hocus, seven-year-old gelded son of Arch, Arch, Arch. Out of Irish Witch by Bernstein, six furlongs, one minute, 11.12 seconds. Second race results official. One, three, four, five, the official results. Keeneland's third race upcoming, including double and pick three wagering. Main track is fast, turf is good. In this third event, scratch the six, ruler of the universe. Again, scratch six, ruler of the universe. Jockey for the five, Midnight Stormy, Declan Cannon. Jockey for the five, Midnight Stormy, Declan Cannon.
Third race, 20 minutes to post. Starter allowance, starter 50 for three-year-olds, which have started for the claiming price of 50000 or less and which have not won a race other than maiden or claiming. It's the about seven furlongs on the beard course. Scratch the number six horse. So we have a field of 10 that will be running in race number three on this fast main track. I go to the outside with the 11 horse. That is Northern Chill for Jordan Blair. One of my stronger opinions of the afternoon. I typically try to stay away from horses that just broke their maiden and are facing winners for the first time. But with Northern Chill, I think he can break sharp and get over and get down to the inside, which I think we've seen over these days of racing at the beginning of this spring meet is a good spot to be on this main track. So Ray Gutierrez is in the saddle. He can be very aggressive with these horses. We know that he will be with Northern Chill. If he breaks sharp, gets over and clears this group, he's got a chance to go back to back in his career. And what a difference things changed for him when it came to those route races to sprinting last time out. He was just not nearly as good in those first two route races. And part of that may have had to do with the off tracks that he caught at Oaklawn Park. But he gets a fast track like he did in his most recent start. He broke his maiden for 50. He's in a starter 50. He's got speed. And he's got Ray Gutierrez, which all adds up for me at a 9-2 to two as a horse that I'd like quite a bit on this card in race number three. The number seven horse, uh, pretty fast for Eric Foster. Uh, here is a colt by Fast Anna, who also got some, has some speed to him as well. He started off his career in Maiden Special Weight Company and even one of the restricted auction RNA races at Keeneland last fall, and he didn't run bad that day. He was able to break his maiden last time out at Turfway Park in a maiden $50,000 claimer, and based on the speed figures and the times that he had been running in his two-year-old races to now three, he's gotten better. So at odds of 6-1 to one on the board with Abel Cedillo riding for Eric Foster, he is a contender at a very good price here in race number three. And then the full horse, New Heart, who is five to one on the board, winner at Turfway Park and a maiden 50 for trainer Michael Stidham, well-bred son of Medallia Doro, who's protected and cuts back in distance. He's probably going to be outrun, try to come from off the pace and win this one here today. But Gerardo Corrales rode him to victory on debut at five to one. He's hanging at that number right now. I think he has to be respected on the cutback in distance and the way that he was able to win on debut for trainer Michael Stidham. It is a good race, and another note on the number four horse, Newhart. Michael Stidham, the trainer, when he moves horses off of all weather races to dirt for the first time, a 26% strike rate. That is a very good percentage. Anything in the 20s is a very good success rate when it comes to trainer stats or rider stats for that matter. But all weather to dirt for Michael Stidham trained runners, Newhart, falls into that category, and they're winning at a 26% clip. 17 minutes away from another phenomenal betting race here at Keeneland. It's race number three on this Sunday card.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race starter allowance for three-year-olds beard course about seven furlongs over the fast main track. Double and pick three wagering. Reminder, scratch the six. Ruler of the universe number six is scratched. Jockey for the five midnight stormy. Declan Cannon rides the five post time at eight minutes. Looking at Barksdale, the number eight horse for trainer Will Walden and Cypress Creek Equine, three to one on the board right now for the son of Street Sense. This is an interesting move by Will Walden to get him eligible for this race because last time out he opted to run him for the $50,000 tag and a first level allowance optional claiming event when he still had the condition and by doing so got eligibility in this starter allowance race. He was 20 to four, 24 to 1 that day. They're going to take blinkers off this son of street sense. It's a very, very interesting move and a bit of a poker play, in my opinion, by Will Walden doing so and obviously finding this race on down the line to potentially focus in on by running for 50 and they get the benefit of nobody claiming this horse for 50. And he's 3-1 to one on the board right now with Gaff Leone in the saddle. He is sprinting for the second time in his career. He gets a better post than what he did last time out where he was drawn very wide in a field of 11. So Barksdale, uh, looking at his conditions and where he's coming from, uh, a heck of a move from Will Walden to get him into this spot here today, this starter 50. Tizzy Indy, the number 10 horse, he, he looks like a, a Keith DeSormo trainee. It feels like Keith DeSormo has so many of these dark bay or brown horses, and this is a dark bay son of Take Charge Indy for Keith DeSormo with that long black tail. He comes out of races that were much tougher, and he's eligible for this race, having broken his maiden for 20. He went into the deep end of the pool in his last few starts down at fairgrounds, including running in the Lecompte and the grade two risen star stakes, where he was 177 to one. That was a race taken by Sierra Leone own our Toyota Bluegrass Stakes winner just yesterday. So he cuts back in distance. I think that's the main question for the 10 horse Tizzy Indy. Is, a, is he a true one turn type of horse? He may be against these likes and the types that he's facing versus what he has seen in his last three. Has to be respected on the drop down in class for Calumet Farm. Tizzy Indy right now nine to one on the board. But five to two on Barksdale, the eight. Another very good betting race in the early portion, portion of the card, which is race number three here at Keeneland Racecourse. Less than five minutes to post. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race. Moving into line, race three. Fear and Loathing goes in. New Heart moves into the gate. Tizzy Endy comes forward. Midnight Stormy. Northern Chill will be the last to load. Moves into line at the post. And they're off. Northern Chill broke alertly up from the far outside. Fear and Loathing at Barksdale right there pretty fast. Kicks in from between horses and Great Rich EM is there down toward the inside as they head onto the main track, head up the back stretch now. Northern Chill far outside has a head in front. Barksdale moves by for the lead now by just a half length. Pretty fast is third. Great Rich EM is fourth to the inside by just a neck. And then Fear and Loathing fifth up on the outside. Illini center of the track is in sixth. As they head for the far turn, Noble Gentleman back toward the inside in the seventh position. Midnight Stormy is in eighth. And then Tizzy Indy is ninth. And Newhart, the distant trailer, back in the tenth position, 22.83 seconds was the time for that opening quarter. On to the far turn, Barksdale against the rail, leads it by three quarters of a length. Northern Chill goes second up on the outside. And then Great Richie M., who's still back toward the inside, still third, just over two lengths off the lead. Gap of two to pretty fast in fourth. Illini is in fifth. The rest have a lot of work to do. Just over a quarter mile to go. Barksdale, the leader, top of the stretch. Barksdale opens up here by three and a half, four, five lengths clear. Northern Chill is second. Great Richie M. comes up the inside to challenge for that second spot. And now takes second, tries to set sail to try to come after the leader, Barksdale, who's already inside the eighth pole and still has the lead by four. Great Rich EM is in second, and then Northern Chill is in third. 16th to go, Barksdale in front for Tyler Gaffalione, and Barksdale wins it. Great Rich EM was across the line in second. Northern Chill was third, and Tizzy Indy was fourth.
The well-spotted Barksdale takes race number three here at Keeneland as speed hold once again on this main track and at odds of eight to five, the son of Street Sense picks up win number two of his career. The 11 broke sharp, but he, the outside draw, he had to cross over and come on even terms with the eight and then he started to flatten out the one making chase, but never got close to Barksdale who was too much for him in this third event on this Sunday afternoon. The unofficial results of Keeneland's third race, number eight, Barksdale finished first. Number one, Great Rich E.M. second. The 11, Northern Chill third. Number 10, Tizzy Indy fourth. Eight, one, 11, 10, unofficial. In the winner circle for Keeneland's third race, number eight, Barksdale, owned by Cypress Creek Equine of Kevin Moody, Will Walden, the trainer, Tyler Gaffalione, the winning jockey. Barksdale, a three-year-old gelded son of Street Sense, out of Charlotte Lucas by Bernardini, bred in Kentucky by Dixiana Farms, LLC. Beard course about seven furlongs, one minute, 27.6. Third race, results official, 8-1, 11-10, the official results.
Keeneland's fourth race upcoming. Main track is listed fast. Race four will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. In the fourth event, scratch number four, Princess Mayfair. Number four, Princess Mayfair is a scratch. Double and pick three, wagering start of the pick six, no carryover. Main track is fast. The turf is good. The rail at 10 feet on the turf course today. Fourth race coming up.
Race four starts the Sunday pick six. It's a first level allowance condition, optional $100,000 mile and a 16th race. First wire finish, short stretch for these three-year-old fillies. And the number two horse, Twirling Good Time, is the two-to-one favorite right now. I go in this direction with the daughter of Twirling Candy, who won on debut at the end of September for Rigney Racing and trainer Philip Bauer. It seemed like they could do no wrong over at Churchill Downs back during the fall months at Churchill Downs. And this filly part of it. She was three to one that day. She won going five and a half furlongs. She's bred to get further as she'll be asked to do today. She's got speed. She's got a lot going for her, especially down on the inside with Saez and a first wire finish coming off the bench is going to help her as well. Twirling good time two to one. I think that she can do it here as she should be ready to roll based on her workouts down at fairgrounds for trainer Philip Bauer. The number three horse. Yes, indeed. Good looking Bolt Doro Philly that was purchased as a two year old last spring for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the Lale stables she won her second career start by four and three quarter lengths and that was the first time that she went long she shouldn't be too far off of the pace just down to her inside and i think this post position draw benefits her being right near her main competition and this is by no means a one horse race but with twirling good time setting up to be a target for her going into the first turn being drawn just to her outside i think is a very good situation for yes indeed who will be guided by brian hernandez jr once again the jockey who rode her in her first two starts including that win in mid-march and then the number nine horse on the outside landed for another one for the lale stables this omaha beach philly being sent out by wesley ward she gets lasix for the first time she's also quick it's not going to be an easy outside draw to win from with the speed down to her inside with that that run into the first turn but she's stakes placed in new york at aqueduct she's done nothing but race up in new york as she comes to kentucky for the first time again gets lasix for the first time here today this is a step up in competition i think even a step up in competition from what she saw in that one hundred thousand dollar stake at aqueduct but johnny velasquez in the saddle uh, should be forward here today going this mile and a 16th trip it is a deep race 15 minutes to post race number four start of the sunday pick six as doubles continue to roll as do the 50 cent pick threes good luck here in race number four
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race. The Claiborne allow its optional claiming race for a price of $100,000. Three-year-old fillies a mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the four. Princess Mayfair, number four, is scratched. Double and pick three wagering. Start of the pick six. No carryover. Main track is fast. Turf is good. Post time at eight minutes. Pushing the past performances aside and looking at these fillies physically and from a turned out perspective, and this is a good looking group of three year old fillies as you would expect. Number five horse really caught my eye here in race number four. She is a filly by Enticed who has gotten better in her last couple of starts. From my eye, she's one of the biggest fillies in this race. Now, one of the concerns I would have is, is, is she going to be outrun by the faster fillies, at least on paper and from what they've done so far in their career, be outrun early on in this race? And will she be able to reel them in? She may be a filly that wants a little bit more ground, but she is a big, good-looking filly who has gotten better in her last two starts for whatever reason, perhaps just coming into herself, picking up fitness off of those races in December and January at Turfway Park, but she looks better than what her price suggests on the tote board at odds of 27 to 1. That's the number five horse, 457. Another well turned out filly, Pretty Anna, the number eight horse for Three Chimneys Farm. She comes from a big family. She is a filly by Quality Road from that extremely productive first damn quiet giant. She's a winner last time out at Fairgrounds. She was even money in both of her starts. And she was second, third on debut, but then found a little bit more gate speed in that second career start, got more position, and was able to pick off that victory by three quarters of a length. I am really surprised that she is nine to one on the tote board right now, given how she was played in Maiden Company down at Fairgrounds. Now, granted, this is a step up facing winners for the first time, but she's a beautiful filly from a big time family for Three Chimneys Farm, which Joel Rosario in the saddle. Four minutes to post. The two is now eight to five. That is twirling good time for Rigney Racing and Philip Bauer. Six months ago, broke her maiden going five and a half. But as I mentioned before, she is bred to get further distances. Good luck in race number four, less than four minutes to post.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race, the Claiborne, start of the pick six. Moving into line for the fourth. Yes, indeed, moves into line along with Prettyana. Four fifty seven. Landed will be the last to load. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Landed from the outside and twirling good time from the inside. Little Jamie up close in between that pair. These three come to the front together. They head down to the first turn. Landed's caught wide. Was three wide, now two wide into the first turn. Moves up to challenge Little Jamie, who's over against the rail to save the ground in that lead battle. Around the first turn, twirling good time, content to drop back into third against the rail and save some ground as well. Pretty Anna, fourth, just off her flank. Then Yes Indeed is fifth. Befriended is wide in sixth position. Awkward move there for Yes Indeed around the first turn. Had to check. Now starts to move up carefully between horses. Further back, 457, and sing a little song. Opening quarter went in 23.1. They approach the midpoint of the backstretch. Befriended swings out to the center of the racetrack. You've got landed against the rail leading it, and then between that pair is where we find twirling good time and pretty on it. The front four separated by a length as they head for the far turn. That opening half mile went in 48.33 seconds. Little Jamie looking for some running room down to the inside, not finding it just yet. Is fifth, two lengths off the lead, joined by Yes Indeed, then 457, and sing a little song at the back. Landed is still the leader midway on the far turn, leads at three quarters of a length. Twirling good time is second and a half length. Befriended, caught wide, swings up third on the far outside. Little Jamie still toward the inside. They're already past the quarter pole and coming to the top of the short stretch. Landed is the leader. Twirling good time, befriended, stack up to the outside off the far turn. Little Jamie looks to the inside and fourth. Landed the leader. Befriended there from the outside. Twirling good time is in third. Little Jamie back toward the inside. It is Landed still in front in the final 16th. Landed with the lead. Landed. John Velasquez in front by two and a half lengths. It is Landed to win it. Going to be a head bob to decide the runner-up position. Either Befriended or Little Jamie for that second spot. Johnny Velasquez and New York Brad Philly landed, did what they had to do from that outside draw, get over and get to the front. And she kept on going for the Lale Stables, the daughter of Omaha Beach in her first two turn test. She passes it with a plum seven to two tight for the second money, but landed the clear winner in race number four here at Keeneland.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fourth race, number nine, Landed, finished first. Number six, Befriended, was second. Number seven, Little Jamie, third. Number three, Yes, Indeed, fourth. Nine, six, seven, three, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's fourth race, the Claiborne, number nine, landed, owned by Lyle Stables of Roy Jackson, the trainer Wesley Ward, and the jockey John Velasquez. Landed, three-year-old filly by Omaha Beach, out of glory gold by Medallia Doro. The winner bred in New York by final furlong racing stable and Maysmith stable, a mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track, one minute 45.85 seconds. In the winter circle, the Claiborne Trophy presentation to the connections of Landed. Fourth race results official. Nine six seven three the official results. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming. In race five, scratch the 10, Laura's Charm. Also scratch the 13, Erna. Scratch the 15, Covenant Lady. And scratch 16, Secret Statement. Again, scratch the 10, Laura's Charm. Scratch number 13, Erna. Scratch the 15, Covenant Lady. And scratch 16, Secret statement. A reminder, number 14 will run. 14, Triana, draws into the race. And there's an overweight, the 5, Hideki, jockey one pound over. 5, Hideki, jockey one pound over. Double pick 3, start of the late pick 5, start of the Keeneland turf pick 3, made up of races 5, 7, and 9. 
Main track is fast, turf is good, the rail at 10 feet on the turf course.
Race 5 is coming up next year at Keeneland Racecourse, and this race does kick off that $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3. A very interesting sequence starting off with this one as well. The number four run for the hills, trained by Mark Cassie, comes out of three consecutive tries on the turf course down there at Gulfstream Park. That was a five furlong configuration. I think this horse will appreciate a little bit more distance to five and a half furlongs today, and hopefully she'll be able to be a little bit more forwardly placed. This is a filly that has a, has shown speed before in the past, whether it be at six furlongs or maybe even a little bit shorter than that. I, I think just because of the really fast fractions that she had to go against in the last two and the fact that they were five furlong races, she had to drop back and she just had way too much to do in those allowance races. But the form fits. She does come out of very good events, uh, strong races, strong competition, and I think she fits the flow of this race a little bit better than those last two that she comes out of. The number eight horse, Hurricane Debbie, is next for trainer Wesley Ward. She got a good prep race last time out down at Gulfstream Park. Very fast fraction she closed it, closed into, but it's always a feat in a turf sprint when you can make up that much ground and still win. I did think that this race came up quite tough, maybe a little bit tougher than the field that she faced last time out, And but she could very well easily go back-to-back -back here. And speaking of back-to-back, -back, maybe we see Wesley Ward and Johnny V team up for back-to-back -back wins on today's card. And then finally, we get to the number nine horse, American Rocket. I don't know what to do with this mare. She's so classy and she's so nice. Uh, when she debuted, it was at Saratoga. She ran really well. She came back to finish fourth in the grade one spin away. She even went against grade one company and the Rosette after that, going against Chocolate Gelato. Uh, she was really thrown into the deep end that season, but she's been given a lot of time. And the fact that she won off of that type of a layoff, two starts back at Gulfstream, I think is impressive in its own right. And sometimes when we see horses with a big performance like that, off the layoff sometimes they bounce we call that the bounce factor and i think that probably happened to her last time out she also didn't get away from the gate very well so there are some things you know some excuses i would say for her last performance the biggest question here today is whether or not she's going to like the turf course and whether or not she's fast enough at five and a half on the turf that's always that other factor here she could like the surface but she might not be fast enough at five and a half i do think that sometimes this keen turf course, especially at this distance, is a little bit more kinder to maybe horses that can go a little bit farther. Uh, so that's why I did use her in the top three. But she does have a lot to prove here, especially at odds of five to one. It would be tough to take her as a win proposition here any lower than those five to one odds. But I do think she has a lot of class. She's just really going to have to get going at the top of the lane. Those are the top three selections for me with the number four run for the hills on top, a very competitive turf sprint allowance event coming up next that kicks off that $3 Keeneland Turf Pick 3. Good luck.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race. The ups and downs, an allowance for fillies and mares age four and up. Five and a half furlongs over the turf listed good. The rail at 10 feet. Scratch the 10, Laura's Charm. Scratch 13, Erna. Also scratch the 15, Covenant Lady, and the 16, Secret Statement. A reminder, number 14, Driana, draws into the race. Overweight, the 5, Hideki. The jockey, one pound over. Double, pick three, and start of the late pick five, and start of the Keeneland Turf pick three, made up of races five, seven, and nine. Post time at six minutes.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, the ups and downs. Start of the late pick five, start of the Keeneland turf pick three. Moving into line for the fifth. American Rocket moves into line. Run for the Hills goes in. Hideki and how about Dim Apples? Peacock Lass moves into line. Admissible going in. Triana will be the last to load. Goes in. They are at the post. And they're off. There goes Hurricane Debbie. How about Dim Apples? Driana, all from the outside. Run for the hills. Has early speed up and down to close up fifth in the opening strides. Frango Electrico moves up a couple of spots from sixth. Peacock last behind a wall of horses early. In seventh, Hideki is eighth toward the inside. Admissible goes ninth up on the outside as they head for the far turn. Pammy's Ready comes next from in between horses. American Rocket will have some running to do. Last at the entry to the turn. Back up front. Boudoir Burlesque between horses challenging up and down. And there there is run for the hills on the far outside. A close-up third. Top three separated by less than a length. Hurricane Debbie is fourth. Has to go to the far outside. Still four lengths off the lead. Frango Electrico. Fifth back toward the inside as they turn for home. Then Peacock Lass, who's seven from the front. Into the stretch. Up and down. Chased by run for the hills. Run for the hills takes a narrow lead from up and down. Then Hurricane Debbie in third. Peacock Lass is in fourth. How about Dim Apples is fifth. And how about Dim Apples still five lengths away. And deep stretch from run for the hills. How about Dim Apples goes toward second running along with peacock last here's the line run for the hills wins it for jose ortiz how about dim apples up for second at the expense of peacock last in third Photo for play, sold all tickets.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race. Number four, Run for the Hills, finished first. Eleven, How About Dem Apples, second. Six, Peacock, last third. Eight, Hurricane Debbie, fourth. Four, eleven, six, eight, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's fifth race, the ups and downs, number four, Run for the Hills. Owned by Gary Barber, trained by Mark Cassie, Jose Ortiz is the jockey. Run for the Hills, a five-year-old daughter of Run Happy, out of fast resource by Bob and John. Winter bred in Kentucky by Peter Burglar Racing and Trist LLC. Keeneland November graduate, Run for the Hills, five and a half furlongs, one minute, 3.24 seconds. Over the turf listed good results are official 41168 the official results early pick 5 pays on 5 of 5 with a consolation 4 of 5 In the winter circle, the Ups and Downs trophy presentation to the connections of Run for the Hills. Keeneland's sixth race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering start of the late pick four. Scratch number one, Speed Shopper. Also scratch 14, Neon Icon, 15, Spirited, and 16, Foreseen. Again, scratch the one, Speed Shopper. Also scratch 14, Neon Icon, 15, Spirited, and 16, Foreseen. A reminder, number 13 draws into the race. 13, Mystical Chant will run. Main track is listed fast, turf is good. A reminder, sixth race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire.
Late pick four, or a pick four, kicks off in this race, a race six, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track for this maiden special weight event. And we will uh, start talking about the number nine horse. This is my top selection. This is Encourage Each Other for trainer Todd Pletcher. So what happened in this horse's debut? That Several horses come out of the same race, Restless Dreamer being one of them, for Scene being another one. Uh, that race, it was really hard to tell anything because there, it was pouring down rain. Uh, the track announcer and Pete Aiello could barely call the race. You could barely see anything. That's how bad the rain was, and that's how sloppy the main track was on that particular day. I think we're going to see way much more from this filly than what we saw first time out. I don't think you can hold it against any of those horses uh, that come out of that performance. I'm looking at encourage each other more so as a first time starter. She's a filly by street sense. She's out of an into mischief mare. She has a really nice type of pedigree. Blinkers go on her today and I just I do think she got something out of that first race. I just don't think she liked the track whatsoever. So I think with that dirtied up form we'll be able to get a little bit better of a price and I think six to one is a very generous price on this runner. The five, Sitamara, is uh, another one that comes out of a Gulfstream Park race, but uh, that race was actually on the 6th of March, so it was a different day and a different type of sloppy sealed surface. When I went back and watched that replay too, it kind of looked like she was climbing in the late stages of the race. So to me, when I look at the race, she probably handled that surface. I don't know if she was best on that type of surface. I think she's going to improve, not only getting to the two-turn distance at a mile and a 16th, but I also think she's going to take a big step forward on a fast main track. She's her favorite right now at eight to five. And then finally, we get to the six, Restless Dreamer for trainer Chad Brown kind of mentioned this yesterday and it applied and it was a successful angle yesterday with his maiden special weights uh, horses make, coming back in their second start he wins he wins at about 38 percent it is a very very strong angle for the barn and just given the way that she ran first time out it kind of looked like she just kind of loped around there obviously do gooder was the winner of the race she went on to win by four lengths in that event i can really see this horse improving in her second start and statistically that is a winning move for trainer chad brown tyler gaffleone will be aboard her here today so that is the top three here but we're uh, take a moment and take a closer look at some of these contenders and report track side in just a few moments At Keeneland, please note the condition of the turf course is now listed firm. Main track fast, turf is now firm.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race, the Newtown Anner Stud. Maiden special weight for three-year-old fillies at a mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track. Scratch the one speed chopper. Also scratch the 14 neon icon, the 15 spirited, and the 16 foreseen. A reminder, number 13 draws in. 13 mystical chant will run. Double, pick three, and start of the late pick four. The main track is fast. The turf is now listed firm. Post time in six minutes. Taking a closer look at some of these competitors here for race six, we'll kick it off with the number two, Claire's Jeté, a first-time starter for trainer Phil Bauer, who does very, very well with his maiden special weight first-time starters. And I would imagine this could apply to this particular filly. Rigney Racing went to the Keeneland September sale back in 2022, and they picked up some really nice horses. This was one of them, but also Tipsy Tammy, who's going to be running in the grade two Beaumont a little bit later today. Claire Here's Jate. She's a really tall, lanky filly, so I can understand why they decided to debut her at two turns. She just does not look like a sprinter. Definitely looks like a two-turn horse. And look, sometimes it can be really tough to get a horse at peak fitness to win first time out at two turns. But if anybody can do it, I think Phil Bauer can do it because his maidens just run so well first time out. She's on her toes. I'm curious to see how much show speed she shows out of the gate just because she looks like a really high energy type of filly. Let's take a look at the number four horse. That's Talk About Me, a second time starter for trainer Troy Green. And this Philly caught the eye, caught the attention of the clocker. She is the clocker report pick today, and she actually ran really well for a timeout as well. She closed from off of it to lose by just a neck at 17 to 1 at Turfway Park. Today, she gets to the main track. She's a Philly by Justify out of a tap at Mare. With that pedigree, I would think that she would take a liking to the main track today, and she also gets the addition of Lasix. But she has been impressive in the morning with some of her drills, including that one recently on the 1st of April right here at Keeneland. Finally, the number 13, Mystical Chant. This is a filly that does draw into the race with some of the scratches. Don't forget about her because she looks really well today. 
I don't know what to make of her first three performances on the dirt. She ran okay first time out, and then she seemed to just kind of fall apart. But she was freshened. She uh, came into the Ben Colbrook barn, and she did have an improved performance last time out. Can't say that I'm crazy about the post position, but she was one of the most dappled horses in the post grade. She just looks really well, really happy today. She'll see what she can do from that outside post position, the 13 mystical chant right now at 10 to 1. But a competitive group, I should say, that the five said Amara, I didn't talk about her track side because there's nothing more to say. She's just a very beautiful filly, and I think in many ways she is the filly to beat here. Just a few minutes out. Two minutes out from the race six. Good luck. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, the Newtown Anner Stud, start of the late pick four. Moving into line for the sixth. Ava Moon Pie moves into the gate. Now, yay, hooray. Chilled coming forward. Mystical Chant will be the last to load. Sidamara into the gate. Restless Dreamer. Jessamine Hill goes in. Mystical Chant, last one. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off. There's Claire Jeté from the inside and Yehu Ray from the outside. These two come to the front, chilled in mystical chant. And Sicilian Princess is away running in the fifth position. Claire Jeté and Yehu Ray, they are the top two as they head into the first turn. Mystical chant caught three wide. 
toward the far outside in that third position, just a length and a half off the early leader. Sicilian Princess gets over to the inside and travels along in the fourth spot. Restless Dreamer, three lanes off the rail, moves up two spots from sixth in to fourth. That will shuffle chilled between horses back into the sixth position onto the back stretch. And is followed by Let's Talk About Me, who is seventh to the inside. Encourage each other, moves by one spot from eighth. Cinemara starts to move up from the back, but is ninth, running eight lengths off the lead, placed toward the center of the racetrack. And then further back, Jessamine Hill against the rail, who's in 10th, just basking as 11th. Ava Moon Pie, last of the 12, 23.07 for the quarter, 47.5 for the first half mile. To the far turn, Claire Jete against the rail, leads it by a neck. Ye Hooray is second by a half length. Mystical Chant is third. Restless Dreamer going to be wide, about five wide to the far turn. A length off the front trio, but inching forward to the outside. Encourage each other is right behind her. Five lengths to make up there as they round the far turn. Chilled is between horses in six throughout the quarter pole. Sidamara has to go wide. Now threads the needle through some traffic and Sidamara starts to move to the center of the racetrack from sixth to fifth to fourth. But it is the short stretch as they turn for home. Mystical chance. Sidamara one, two past Claire Chate. Then chilled. Let's talk about me to the far outside of the final furlong along with Just Basking. But Sidamara has the lead. Just Basking runs on from the outside. Chilled is there. Sidamara is the leader though. Sidamara in front. Sidamara for Jose Ortiz. Sidamara wins it, just basking second. Chilled across the line in third. Mystical Chant was fourth. Sidamara looked like a winner every step of the way. Here is she is once again rounding around the corner and just getting into her momentum. We see a couple of horses making a late bid and deep stretch, but they could not catch her in time. This well-bred daughter here of Arrogate gets the victory, a homebred for Judmont Farms and trainer Bill Mott. The unofficial results of Keeneland's sixth race. Number five, Sid Amara finished first. Number eight, Just Basking was second. Number 12, Chilled was third. Number 13, Mystical Chant was fourth. Five, eight, 12, 13, unofficial.
In the winner's circle for Keeneland sixth race, the Newtown Anner Stud, number five, Sid Amara, owned by Judd Mott of Fahad Ben College, trained by Bill Mott. Back to back wins on the card for jockey Jose Ortiz. Sid Amara, three year old filly by Arrogate, out of Spring in the Air by Spring at Last, bred in Kentucky by Judd Mott. Mile and a sixteenth over the fast main track, one minute forty six point two eight seconds. In the winter circle, the Newtown Anner Stud trophy presentation to the connections of Sidamara. And the results official for race six. 5, 8, 12, 13, the official results. Keeneland 7th race upcoming, the Palisades Stakes. The turf is now listed firm. The rail at 10 feet. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. Take out the also eligibles 13 and 14. They did not draw into the race.
18 minutes out from the seventh race here at Keeneland. It's the fifth running of the Palisades. They're going to be heading out to the turf course at the distance of five and a half furlongs. It is a very competitive group. Uh, I'm only going to talk about three horses. We'll talk about more trackside, but uh, the conversation does not end there. This is a very, very deep field. But we'll start off with the number eight, My Boy Prince. This is a horse who ultimately uh, stretched out in distance in the latter half of his two-year-old season. When he started, he started sprinting up at Woodbine in Canada. He was very impressive in those sprint races. In fact, he even won a stakes race by 14 lengths, beating 10 other horses in doing so. And then after that, stretched out to the mile in the summer the grade one summer stakes up at Woodbine finished second in that event he has won at two turns but when you look at his two turn races he just doesn't have that as good of punch I would say um, at his two turn races than he does at his sprint races so I do like this spot for him coming in off the layoff he's incredibly fast really I think he can do anything at the end of the day but he's very very fast and of course you like to see that speed and these five and a half furlong turf sprints. So he's going to be the top play for me as we go to another speedy horse. That's the 12 refuel. This horse is very fast. He posted 21 and two, 43 and four fractions for the half at Gulfstream Park over the tapita surface and also uh, over the turf surface. Very fast fractions throughout in both of those races. He has a beautiful pedigree. He's a son of hard spun. He's out of a Spitestown mare. Her name was Quick Flip, and uh, that uh, means that he's a half-brother to Following C, who was a grade two winner. He won the Vosberg. He also was second in the Cigar Mile. So there is a lot of pedigree there, and I always love hard spuns. I think they're very honest racehorses at the end of the day. This horse is very fast, and I wouldn't be surprised if he can clear from this outside post, post position and still get into a very good position. I think he's an up-and-comer. He's been a very impressive horse. He's lightly raced compared to some of these other horses, but I don't know that that matters, especially in turf sprints. Speed is speed, and at the end of the day, you just need to be the fastest. The four no-name nets is where we go next for trainer George Weaver. This horse hasn't been seen since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, where he finished fourth behind Big Evs, who's a very, very nice turf sprinter. Prior to that, he was a multiple stakes winner. Uh, he won first time out. He actually won a stakes race in his first start. That was down at Gulfstream Park. That was essentially a win in your in to go to Royal Ascot. And they did go to Royal Ascot. They ran in the Group 2 Norfolk Stakes during their festival. Didn't run very well. I, I just felt like he kind of got run off his feet in that event. But that Norfolk actually came up to be very tough. Valiant Force was the winner. We saw Elite Status uh, prominently placed in that field as well. So... He's definitely class tested. I'll be curious to see how he comes back in his three-year-old debut. He was very, very good at two. And if he can pick up where he left off, in many ways, he is the horse to beat here at two to one. This is a very strong group, competitive field for the fifth running of the Palisades or 15 minutes out. We'll take a closer look at these horses momentarily and bring you a trackside report in just a bit.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's seventh race. The Palisades, three-year-olds at five and a half furlongs on the firm turf, rail at 10 feet. Double and pick three wagering starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. Take out the also eligibles, 13 and 14. They did not draw into the race. Post time in seven minutes. Post parade for the Palisades, number one, Mattingly, owned by the Iron Horse Racing Stable LLC of Harlan Malter, Harlow Stables LLC of Eric Johnson, trained by Joe Orsino, Paco Lopez, the jockey. Two, Coin Miner, owned by Rocker O Ranch LLC of Ronald Ortowski, trained by Keith DeSormo, jockey James Graham. Three, Mansa Musa, owned by Team Valor International of Barry Irwin, owned also by Gary Barber, trained by Belmont jockey Junior Alvarado. Four, No Name Mets, owned by Bregman Family Racing LLC of Alex Bregman, WWBD LLC of Ivan Cabrera, Edge Racing of Joe Moran, trained by George Weaver, jockey Irad Ortiz Jr. Five, Silent Heart, owned by Terry Hamilton, trained by Brian Lynch, the jockey John Velasquez. Six Fandom races for Stone Street Stables LLC of Barbara Banky, trainer Wesley Ward, Jose Ortiz to ride. Seven CPG, owned by Keith Johnston and William S. Sparks, trained by Ron Moquette. Frankie DeTore is up. Eight My Boy Prince, owned by Gary Barber, trained by Mark Cassie, the jockey Joel Rosario. Nine, Committee of One, owned by Kirk and Judy Robison, trained by Steve Asmussen, Brian Hernandez, Jr., to ride. Number 10, Shards, owned by NBS Stable of John Ballantyne, Crownsway Racing LLC of Anthony Rallo, owned also by Kevin Marco, trained by Kelsey Danner, the jockey Adam Biskitza. 11, Aspenite, owned by Winchell Thoroughbreds, LLC of Ron Winchell, trained by Steve Asmussen, Tyler Gaffalione, the jockey. And number 12, Refuel, owned by Rapoli Stable of Mike Rapoli, St. Elias Stable of Vincent Viola, trained by Todd Pletcher, jockey Luis Saez. Five minutes to post. What a strong stakes field this is. And we do have a couple of horses coming in off of long layoffs, and this is one of them. It's the Ford No Name Mets. The last time we saw him, he was sprinting in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. He looks really good off the layoff. I can't say that he doesn't look fit. I mean, this horse definitely looks well prepared coming in off the layoff. It's funny, though, because he is very short coupled, which you see in turf sprinters, sprinters in general, really rounded out in his hind quarters. You can see how uh, defined he is, too. He doesn't look like he has much uh, extra condition to him. He just looks like a very fit horse today. But in terms of his overall size, I do feel like he hasn't grown that much since last year. He's always been kind of that strong, sturdy type of horse, very strong, not too big in size. And I, I see the same uh, in his uh, physical build here in his three-year-old season. But he does look very well prepared. Good energy, too. Good positive energy on the track. Another horse that is coming off a layoff is the six fandom. And this is another horse that kind of impressed me because obviously he was very impressive first time out here at Keeneland. They went to the Coventry. He didn't run well. We haven't seen him since then. But to me, I actually think this horse has grown a little bit, grown, matured, and I think all signs point to maybe a good performance today in his three-year-old debut. 
The 10 shards is a horse I wanted to talk about at a price. He's 12 to 1 right now. I did talk to Kelsey Danner prior to his race last time in the Animal Kingdom, and I asked her why she opted for that spot. She said, well, our options were either this spot or seven and a half furlongs on the turf at Gulfstream Park. That's a two-turn race. Clearly, he's not a two-turn horse. And last time out was clearly a prep race. He only really got going late. I think he was kind of confused by the surface and the beginning stages of the race. But he picked up a lot of ground, really picked up the pace coming down the lane. And I thought it was a sneaky good race. And I also think he's really sneaky in this race. He had huge traffic trouble in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, the same race that the favorite comes out of. He had a worse trip in, in that event. So I think he is very live at 12 to 1. And finally, the 11 Aspenite. Man, does this horse look good. I know that Steve Asmus and horses always look good. They're always well turned out. But he just looks so strong. He looks like he's a very strong, happy, healthy horse, just judging by his coat and uh, the condition that he's holding as well. He comes out of a race last time out at the fairgrounds when he sprinted. Posting his best career speed figure uh, in his entire, or, excuse me, in his entire career. And I think that this is a horse that just keeps on getting better and better. I know this is a tough spot for him, but I really think he can outrun his odds at 25 to 1. Loaded field here coming up in the Palisades. We are two minutes out. Good luck. <laughs> Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's seventh race, the Palisades Stakes. Moving into line, race seven. No name Mets moves into line. Shards coming forward. Silent Heart. Fandom and Aspenite moving into line. Refuel, the last one. Goes in, they're at the post. They're off in the Palisades. There's Refuel in committee of one. No Name Mets has early speed. Fandom away running in fourth. Silent Heart comes out fifth. Mattingly is in sixth. My Boy Prince comes away in seventh. CPG away running in eighth between horses. Mansa Musa moves up one spot from the ninth to the inside. Aspenite tenth up on the outside to the far turn. Shards is in eleventh. And Coin Miner is last of the twelve. Back up front. No Name Mets. Silent Heart with Refuel joining them to the far outside. The opening quarter in 21. 
31.59 seconds. Mattingly fourth toward the inside, two lengths off the lead. Gap of three, Fandom. A lane off the rail around the far turn in fifth. Mansa Musa is still sixth down toward the inside. My boy Prince is still in seventh position. Committee of one is eighth. They turn for home. Silent Heart, Nona Mets, refuel. Mattingly to the outside with Fandom down the center. Mansa Musa is looking toward the inside. Refuel pokes ahead in front. Mansa Musa up the inside. Silent Heart is still there. Fandom far outside. No name Mets is still fighting on refuel and fandom. And then Mansa Musa back toward the inside. Fandom wins it. Fandom gets up for Jose Ortiz's third win on the card. Fandom to take the Palisades. to his winning ways here the number six fandom he broke his maiden right here at keeneland as a two-year-old and he comes back in a big way this horse was coming in off of a long layoff since june of last year he had to go a little bit wide lots of horses down on the inside had to circle around the field but he gets it done just in the nick of time to give jockey jose ortiz three wins on the day Unofficial results of Keeneland's seventh race. Number six, Fandom, was first. Number three, Mansa Musa, was second. Number 12, Refuel, third. Number four, No Nay Mets, was fourth. Six, three, 12, four, unofficial. Seventh race results official. Six three twelve four the official results.
the official winner of Keeneland's seventh race, the Palisade Stakes. Number six, Fandom, owned by Stone Street Stables, LLC, of Barbara Banky, trained by Wesley Ward, the jockey Jose Ortiz. Fandom, a three-year-old son of showcasing out of Brogan by Pivotal, bred in Great Britain by Chase Moore Farm. One minute, 2.83 seconds. The time for the five-and-a-half furlongs over the firm turf. Three in a row for jockey Jose Ortiz. Two wins today for trainer Wesley Ward. Making the trophy presentation for the Palisades, former Keeneland Director of Broadcast Services, G.D. Hieronymus, presents to the connections of fandom. Fandom takes the Palisades off of that lengthy layoff. Jose Ortiz aboard for the winning ride. Jose, you st sat a stalking trip today. Were you anticipating that, or did you think you would maybe get a, a front-running trip today? I anticipated it was going to be a lot of speed. So, you know, he's coming off the layoff. I wanted to, to sit off a little bit off the speed, and Wesley told me to. You know, he sorts it very well, but he said the horse was ready, so he did an amazing job, and the horse was ready to go. How did this horse quicken down the lane for you, though? It was uh, actually he dropped the bead when we were going to the turn, but when he felt the three horse coming inside of him, he picked it up again, and that's when I decided to go outside, and he gave me a, a very nice kick. Congratulations on a very good day and the stakes win, Jose. Thank you, Gabby. All right, we bring it over here to trainer Wesley Ward. Okay, this horse hasn't raced since June of last year at Royal Ascot. How did you gauge his readiness coming into this performance today? Uh, he came to me from, Ian Brennan had him down um, last, last summer at Saratoga. He had a lung infection, so we sent him back to Barber's Farm there to Ian, and they got him healed up, and he trained him all winter long, had, did a fantastic job. He came up here, he, when the first day he got here, I knew that all I had to do was put him on cruise control, and uh, we had Julio Garcia breeze him from the gate to kind of sharpen him out of there a little bit, and then just last week when he worked with Love Reigns, and uh, Julio was on Love Reigns. He said, Wesley, the Philly, was, the, the Colt was a little better. I knew we were going to be really, really good coming in here. So I, I got to give all the credit to Ian. He did a great job getting him here, and uh, he ran a great race today. What kind of races could we see him run in this year moving forward? You know, we'll, we'll have to sit down with um, Barbara and her team and, and Ian and um, Ben McElroy, who bought the horse, and uh, see what they decide, you know. Royal Ascot's always my, on my top of the list, but, uh, you know, we don't want to overmatch anything. We'll see where we're at, and, and hopefully uh, the horse just keeps can, continuing to be better, get better. Congratulations. Very impressive. Thank you. All right. Fandom gets the job done. Coming back off the long layoff in the Palisades.
Keeneland's 8th and featured race upcoming, 39th running of the Middle Ground Capital Beaumont Grade 2. Main track is listed fast. This will start the last of the day's rolling doubles. No changes in race 8. It is now time for the featured event, the Middle Ground Capital Grade 2 Beaumont at 7 furlongs on the Beard Course. And we start off with the 6. You almost had me for trainer Brad Cox. And sometimes in the spring, much like we saw with Fandom, 
we have the opportunity to see horses in their first race off of the layoff. And that is the case here as well with the six, You Almost Had Me. We haven't seen her since November of last year in the Fern Creek, a race in which she won, but she was precocious from the get-go. I can remember her debuting here last spring for John Hancock. She was so impressive, winning against her fellow two-year-old foes by over eight lengths in that event. Ultimately, she was privately sold and she was transferred into the hands of trainer Brad Cox and she immediately won that Kentucky Juvenile Stakes on Derby weekend. So she has been good from the get-go and I think that is a good sign of her readiness coming in off the layoff. We heard on today at Keeneland earlier today our very own Tom Leach caught up with Brad Cox to try to get a gauge on what this filly has in store coming off the layoff and, and Brad Brad kind of mentioned that he thought uh, the only, uh, I guess, obstacle he thinks that she has to overcome is maybe this distance, especially at a track like Keeneland. Uh, but he did say that her last two workouts were especially impressive, and that has given him more confidence in her ability to run well and win coming in off this layoff. She also has a great post position. Considering the circumstances, this is the post position you want because she also has a very versatile running style. She can win on the lead, she can win stalking, and she can win closing. I think best case scenario, though, is that she's going to sit that pressing trip under Tyler Gaffleone. Speed has been doing very well, especially at one-turn distances on the main track here at Keeneland. The three, Tipsy Tammy is next for trainer Phil Bauer, and she had a horrible break last time out. She kind of caught the side of the game. She was tardy coming out of it, got banged around a couple of times, and despite that, she never stopped trying. She was just too far back. At the winner of the race, Sweet Child of Mine, is a very nice filly in her own right. Look, this filly has had high expectations from the get-go. She was bet down to favoritism against Impel. That should show you something. Impel, a very, very nice filly for Brad Cox. We saw her on Friday run. Uh, but this is clearly a talented filly. I guess the question is whether or not she can get this added distance. She's bred to get added distance, and she has been a very impressive despite having to overcome some obstacles as of late. One more note about her last race, too. She was facing older company. A lot of these fillies are coming out of straight three-year-old races. When you're going against older company and allowance races, I do, I always think that's going to be a tougher race, especially when you consider the time of year that we're in. And then the one Denim and Pearls is the final horse that I'll talk about for trainer Brad Cox. This is another one. She's coming in off of a little freshening. We saw her last race at Oakland Park on the 3rd of February. I thought one of her best races actually was going the one-turn mile at at Churchill Downs in her second career performance. To me, she kind of seems like the filly that wants to get that stalking trip and just go on from there. I think she's best in her one-turn races. I think seven furlongs, one-turn mile is a, her perfect distance. This isn't a big field, so I think she can navigate a trip from that rail post position just try to save ground but given her running style I do wonder if she's going to like kind of be down getting down on the inside and being covered up we'll see if she can overcome it but in many ways this race goes through Brad Cox will it be the one denim and pearls with recency or will it be the six you almost had me coming in off the layoff who was very impressive here at Keeneland around this time last year we're 10 minutes out from the grade two Beaumont
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth and featured race, 39th running of the middle ground capital Beaumont Stakes Grade 2. Three-year-old fillies on the beard course, about seven furlongs over the fast main track. No scratches, no jockey changes in this eighth race. Feature starts the last of the day's rolling doubles. Post time at five minutes. Let's meet the starters for the featured middle ground capital Beaumont. Number one, Denim and Pearls, owned by Red, White, and Blue Racing, LLC, of Randy Gallat, trained by Brad Cox, the jockey Flavian Pratt. Number two, Harbor Springs, owned by the Donemeyer Farm of Myra Ball, trained by Greg Foley, the jockey Irad Ortiz, Jr. Number three, Tipsy Tammy, owned by Rigney Racing, LLC, of Richard Rigney, the trainer Phil Bauer, the jockey John Velasquez. Number four, Chi Chi, owned by Ernest Ferbos, trained by Sam Walensky. Junior Alvarado is up. Five, Viscountess, owned by Commonwealth New Era Racing of Todd Mostoler. Todd Beatty trains. Jose Ortiz is the jockey. And six, you almost had me. Owned by Resolute Racing of John Stewart, trained by Brad Cox, the jockey Tyler Gaffalione. Post time in four minutes. Field is warming up for the Grade 2 Beaumont, and here's a closer look at the number one Denim and Pearls for trainer Brad Cox. And uh, they try to stretch her out to a distance of ground. Last time out, mile and a 16th in the Martha Washington. She ran really well. She ran really well in the start prior to that at Oakland Park in the year's end, but she clearly just doesn't want to go too far. So with those two races under the belt, might put her at a bit of an advantage against this field who's trying to get distance for the first time. And when you look at a horse like you almost had me trying to get this distance off of a long layoff she might have the upper hand here just from a stamina and a fitness standpoint she just looks like a really classy runner I know she was kind of high energy in the paddock but she looks like she has settled down nicely here trackside and really focusing on the task at hand I was most impressed by how this filly looks and how she's warming up here on the track today. The three, Tipsy Tammy, is the other horse I wanted to uh, mention, and she is uh, another one that's just really behaving very well today. Now, when you look at both the one and the three from a physical standpoint, the one Denim and Pearls is much bigger in size than the three Tipsy Tammy, but Tipsy Tammy just looks like a very athletic horse, and I think it takes a lot of athleticism to overcome the gate break that she had to deal with last time out. She did not get out of the gate whatsoever. She overcame that and never stopped trying, and despite kind of her petite size, she has a lot of heart, and uh, she also, again, has just a, a very athletic build. So we'll see what she can do right now. She is three to one as your third choice as the betting public has landed on the six. You almost had me as your six to five favorite. We're a minute out from the featured event.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth and featured race, 39th running of the Middle Ground Capital Beaumont Stakes, grade two. Moving into line, race eight. Tipsy Tammy moves into line. Chi Chi comes forward. Now Viscountess. You almost had me, will be the last to load. Last one goes in at the post. And they're off in the middle ground capital, Beaumont Stakes. You almost had me, quick into stride. Gentleman Pearls is right there, and Viscountess between that pair as they head up the chute and onto the back stretch. Here's Viscountess up to get the lead. Viscountess slides over down next to the rail, leads at three quarters of a length. You almost had me, second up on the outside, then a gap of two lengths. Gentleman Pearls third by two. Harbor Springs is in the fourth position. Chi Chi and then Tipsy Tammy, who moves up one spot from last between horses. Now Tipsy Tammy goes to fourth, but running five lengths off the lead after an opening quarter in 22.99 seconds. Viscountess is the leader. Viscountess leads it by two lengths to the far turn. You almost had me, a second a length and a half, and then Denim and Pearls in third a length and a half. Tipsy Tammy against the rail in fourth, still nearly five lengths off the lead, midway on the far turn. It is joined there by Harbor Springs up on the outside, then a break of nearly five more lengths back to Chi Chi. Now here's You Almost Had Me, right alongside a Viscountess, and Denim and Pearls moves up to try to join them, a length off that front pair in third, a quarter mile to go, then a gap of four more lengths back to Harbor Springs as they turn for home. Denim and Pearls comes forward for the lead, moving toward the eighth pole. And Denim and Pearls, a widening lead coming into the final furlong of the middle ground capital, Beaumont. Denim and Pearls in front by five, by six lengths back to You Almost Had Me, then Harbor Springs and Chi Chi. It is Denim and Pearls romping home for Flavian Pratt to win the middle ground capital, Beaumont Stakes. Harbor Springs got up for second. You Almost Had Me was third. Chi Chi finishing fourth.
Denim and Pearls with a breakout performance today. Her first time going against Graded Stakes Company. She picks up a Graded Stakes score and she does it in very impressive winning fashion. This was an absolute romp. Look at her quickening away from the field here today. She picks up the win for trainer Brad Cox, Flavian Pratt to do the honors. Easy, easy win here in the Grade 2 Beaumont. The unofficial results of Keeneland's featured eighth race. Number one, Denham and Pearls finish first. Number two, Harbor Springs second. Number six, You Almost Had Me third. Number four, Chi Chi was fourth. One, two, six, four, unofficial. Eighth race results official. One, two, six, four, the official results. With a win by nine and a quarter lengths, the official winner of the featured Middle Ground Capital Beaumont Stakes Grade 2, the 39th running of this event. Number one, Denim and Pearls, owned by Red, White, and Blue Racing, LLC, of Randy Gallat, trained by Brad Cox, Flavian Pratt, the jockey. Denim and Pearls, a three-year-old filly by Into Mischief. Out of Majestic Presence by Majestic Warrior, the winner bred in Kentucky by Town and Country Horse Farms, LLC. 
Beard course, about seven furlongs, 1 minute 26.54 seconds. Trophy presentation for the Grade 2 Middle Ground Capital Beaumont Stakes. John Stewart, founder and managing partner, and Scott Duncan, founding partner of Middle Ground Capital, make the presentation to the connections of Denim and Pearls. Denim and Pearls, an absolute romp in the grade two Beaumont today. And here with winning rider Flavian Pratt. How easy and effortless was that for her today? Yeah, no, that was a very good performance today. Obviously, uh, she was traveling well all the way around. I uh, didn't want to move too soon, but she just did it on her own. So I thought, you know, let just uh, let her run from there. And uh, now she did the rest. That was a great move, I think, from Brad to cut back in distance as well. Yeah, just you, she just kind of like, it looks like you just eased on her uh, coming across the wire. It just looks so easy for her today. Do you think those stamina races really set her up for success today? Uh, probably, but uh, she won at Churchill, and uh, I thought she was very talented, you know, from that race. And uh, obviously we went to turn and uh, just uh, couldn't, couldn't repeat that. But uh, obviously, you know, going uh, cut back in distance and the one turn made a difference, yeah. Congratulations. And Brad, what did you see from her last race going a mile and a 16th that made you decide to cut back to the 7 eighths today? That she didn't want to go that far. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, she's uh, she got great trips both times down there at Oakland around two turns and just didn't finish up the way we hoped. Um, so, you know, we kind of zeroed in on this race uh, after that last one at Oakland and uh, she trained very well. She's a great mover. She um, you know, trains very well in the morning and, uh, you know, just was hoping she'd be a mile in eighth fill and we could march toward the Oaks. But, you know, Randy Gallette, the whole team, they were all about, you know, trying to do what's best for her and not make her do something she wasn't capable of doing. And it's work, you know, they rewarded them today. Obviously, you set her up for success today, but were you expecting this type of blowout performance? No, I mean, you know, you, you never know. She drew the one. I thought the three was going to go. She didn't break. Uh, we found ourselves sitting in a great spot with two really good fillies. Uh, the other filly, I think, maybe just uh, just a little, was a little short, but this filly really finished up well. And like you said earlier, probably a lot of stamina and fitness from those two turn races we asked of her at Oakland. Congratulations. Thank you. Beautiful filly. Denim and Pearls takes the grade two Beaumont. Thank you, Gabby. Keeneland's ninth and final race upcoming. No carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Turf is listed firm, the rail at 10 feet. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race.
The ninth and final race is upon us. This field will be heading out to the turf course at the distance of one mile in 13 minutes. It's a first level allowance race. And we start the conversation off with the eight cadencia for Bill Morey. This horse came in off of a layoff last time out at Tampa Bay Downs, and she did sprint going five furlongs. Now, this filly has sprinted before in the past, but I kind of think it was a setup for more distance in the near future. So today, with that one race under the belt, off of the layoff, she can take a big step forward, now stretching out to two turns. It really, too, wasn't the easiest of trips. She had a lot of trouble, and you cannot overcome trouble in a five-for-a-long turf sprint, especially considering the fa fractions that were posted in that event. But she almost won a mile race at Belmont, so I think, you know, if she can run back to that type of performance, that would be a winning performance against this group today. The number three bag lady is next. She... Had, she, this is another one that had a bit of a trip last time out, but she was impressive in breaking her maiden down at the fairgrounds. That was going a mile and a 16th. And I kind of think that she has the type of running style to suggest that she'd be really good at the mile. She just needs an honest pace. She did not get an honest pace last time out. I'm hoping she can save ground under Brian Hernandez Jr., get covered up, get a nice pace in front of her, and come with that closing kick late. And then the number two, uh, for trainer Mike Maker. I think this is a filly that's going to be forwardly placed. Uh, when you look at her last two races, she was on the lead, kind of went a little bit faster on the lead last time out than two starts back when she posted those early fractions of 24 and 2. But she's quick, and she has a good post position given her running style. So she's going to be the third selection for me. That's where the conversation starts, at least in my opinion. It is not where it ends. This is a very challenging field. In fact, I had a kind of a tough time <laughs> handicapping this race. I thought you could go in many directions, but ultimately I did land on the eight cadencia as the top selection at seven to two. We are 11 minutes out from the ninth and final. We'll take a closer look at these horses when they come trackside, and we'll report on that in a minute.
horses are entering the track for Keeneland's ninth and final race, the Jackpot Farm, an allowance for fillies and mares, age four and up, one mile. On the firm turf, the rail at 10 feet. No carryover for the Toyota Super High 5. Take out the also eligibles 13 through 16. They did not draw into the race. A reminder about the overweight, the four squash blossom, the jockey one pound over. Post time in five minutes. Taking a closer look at this field, and the six, apropos, is a horse I wanted to touch on here for trainer Jimmy Toner. She's a huge price right now at 19 to 1, but I loved what I saw from this filly. She tried the turf for the first time last time out. She's a filly by Mendelssohn, so I think ultimately this is going to be her preferred uh, surface. She was good enough to win in just her second start, and they thought highly enough of her to try her against Graded Stakes Company and the forward gal. And now they're probably just trying to go back to the drawing board, but I just thought she was a lovely-looking filly and maybe one to include at a big price. The seven, Holy Foley, is next. And I was curious to see how she would look today because, I, I you know, she's a filly that um, is... Very athletic looking, for sure. And I think that one race last time out going to mile and an eighth 
did her really, really well to set her up for success today. Uh, she has gone against Allowance Company in the past, and it's not always worked out for her. She's kind of a tough filly to ride just because she comes from the clouds. But if she does get that right type of setup in front of her, look for her because I do think that she benefited from that one race under the belt last time out. The eight, Cadencia, is the other horse I wanted to mention because she is the top selection. I liked her stretching out in distance today, second off the layoff. My only concern with her is that she is getting a little bit warm on the track, and maybe that is something that is common for this filly, or I should say mare. Sometimes you uh, want to really look at changes in behavior, so I can't confidently say that I remember her getting washed out or anything like that beforehand, but it's just an observation that I see from her today, and I always like to relay that information, especially when you know we're talking about five to two shots. And then finally, the number 11, Condone, is a, another horse I wanted to mention for trainer Vicki Oliver. She, too, came in off of a layoff at a mile and a quarter last time out, so I would certainly say that that set her up from a fitness standpoint to maybe improve in her second start off the layoff today. But I thought she looked really well on the track and maybe another one to consider at a big price at 11 to 1. This is a very, very tough field. I'll admit it was confusing when you're handicapping it on paper. It's kind of even more confusing after looking at some of these horses on track. But it is a great betting race, and we wish you the best of luck. The ninth and final is next at Keelan. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth and final race, the Jackpot Farm. Moving into line, race nine. Justifiable Bell moves into line. Can't Keep Me Down comes forward along with Saki. Here's Condone. Apropos moves in. Ladon, the last one. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. And there goes King Secret from the inside. King Secret out for the early lead. Cadencia there toward the center of the course. Tatuba's going to move up in the opening strides. Tatuba now takes the lead as they head down into the first turn. King Secret there to the inside. Cadencia far outside is close up to press the issue from third spot as well. Justifiable Bell moves forward into fourth around the turn. It's followed by Apropos in fifth. Can't Keep Me Down travels in sixth position. A lane off the rail as they straighten away down the back stretch. And then Saki, who is now seventh down toward the inside. Squash Blossom eighth on her outside, followed by Bag Lady in ninth position. Holy Foley is in tenth. Ladon is eleventh. Condone is last of the twelve as the field heads up the backstretch. The opening quarter, 22.87 seconds to Tuba, leading Cadencia by three quarters of a length as they head for the far turn. The opening half mile went in 47.75 seconds. King Secret is third, just inside of Justifiable Bell, who is fourth. Can't Keep Me Down, a wide fifth around the turn, still four lengths off the leader. 
And then comes Saki, who is sixth down toward the inside. Squash Blossom is in seventh. Bag Lady is eighth toward the inside. Quarter mile to go. Here's Cadencia alongside of Tatuba. Justifiable Bell still four lengths away in third. King's Secret, then Saki on the outside in fifth. Final furlong. Tatuba has a short lead. Justifiable Bell and Saki from the far outside. Tatuba in front. Here's Justifiable Bell again coming after her. And then Saki in third. Justifiable Bell in front front for Luis Saez, justifiable bell to win the finale. Tatuba was across the line in second. Saki got third. The unofficial results of Keeneland's ninth and final race. Number nine, Justifiable Bell finished first. Number two, Tatuba was second. Number five, Saki was third. Number three, Bag Lady fourth. Number seven, Holy Foley was fifth. Nine, two, five, three, seven, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's ninth race, the Jackpot Farm, number nine, Justifiable Bell, owned by Valley Partners, LLC of Russell Meerdink, trained by Ian Wilkes, the jockey, Luis Saez. Justifiable Bell, a four-year-old filly by Justify, out of Bo Bells by Giants Causeway, winner bred in Kentucky by Jay Grandfield and Ann Cowley. Keeneland's January graduate gets the mile over the turf-listed firm in one minute, 36.25 seconds. Ninth race results official. 92537, the official results.
pick six pays on six of six with a consolation five of six. The late pick five on five of five, a consolation four of five. There will be a carryover for the Toyota Super High Five on Wednesday. The carryover seven thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars. The Valley Partners LLC of Russell Meerdink in the Winter's Circle and the Jackpot Farm Trophy presentation to the winning connections of Justifiable Bell. The second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, will remain open for simulcasting for another 30 minutes. You may advance wager any races occurring after that time. Live racing resumes here on Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.